Series Cup racing tonight, chase race number nine, and we are absolutely getting down to the wire, Cowboy. We'll go down through the points and let everybody know who's who and who's where here just uh, a minute from now, but I'll tell you what, Phoenix International Raceway, this is the reconfigured track, one mile track here tonight, and uh, they call it four turns, kind of a funky turn. Uh, it's a D-shaped oval, but uh, it's one of them funky D-shaped ovals, been around since about 1964. And uh, I'll tell you what, uh, tonight, looking forward to some awesome racing here tonight. Working the booth with me tonight, I am proud to uh, introduce Mike Schreiner uh, along for the ride up here with me tonight. And uh, I guess we can call him the code master, Joel Brown, uh, up here in the booth as well. John Wessling, Magic Fingers, we call him back at the office. Of course, flag to flag on those cameras, the best in the business, cowboy. So uh, stay tuned all night. want to give a big shout-out to my little buddy, Dalton England. I believe he's tuning in and uh, watching here tonight as well. So I uh, hope you have some fun here tonight, Dalton. I don't know if you got school tomorrow or not. Holiday for some of us. Veterans Day tomorrow. So uh, make sure that you, uh, uh, you know, uh, appreciate uh, all the work and all the uh, sacrifices that our veterans have made uh, throughout the years. But uh, tonight's race, uh, like I said, Phoenix International Raceway. This is chase race number nine, and it is shaken out. Joel, let's start with you, bud. Uh, what, can you, what can we expect here tonight from Phoenix? I think he stepped down to the trailer, uh, J.D. Um, he well, hold, let's go with Mike. Just a little bit. All right, let's go with you, Mike. Uh, Mike Schreiner, uh, I know you're heavily involved uh, in the production of this game. I know you do a lot of work. But uh, what are we? What what are you? What are you expecting here tonight? I'm expecting a hard-fought battle. Uh, the racing's gotten really clean here in the last 10, 12 weeks uh, since we got into the chase here, and I think they'll race really hard, try and keep it clean. I, I think we'll still see some cautions. It's a tough racetrack, kind of a one-groove track, and I I just expect a, an exciting show. You bet, and I'll tell you what, uh, you're absolutely right about it being a one-groove track. Now, uh, you know, you've seen some two and three wide here before. Difficult track to pass on. I guarantee you, if you see three wide tonight, it'll be by accident only. Two wide is dangerous enough. Tough to pass here at Phoenix, always been that way. Uh, this is the reconfigured track. However, they're telling me that, uh, for the most part, the guy's got to stay on the other side of that yellow line. They cannot cut it off down there, uh, down the back stretch. Uh, it will throw them for a loop going into turn four. So uh, we'll see how that uh, plays out here tonight. We've got about six minutes to go here at Phoenix. I want to run you down through the points, let you know who's who and who's where. Remember, we come from Texas last week, and uh, that was quite the uh, quite the race. Uh, as well, but uh, and the uh, points tonight, guys. Uh, Warren Peed, he sits at the top of the pile. Now, last time out here at Phoenix, he finished ninth. Last week, he started fifth and he finished in first. So he took the trophy home from from uh, Texas Speedway last week. Philip Stocks, he sits in the number two position. Now, last time out here at Phoenix, now this is the second race uh, of the season, I believe. Uh, takes you way back. So, uh, you know, 30-some-odd weeks ago, Philip Stocks finished eighth here at Phoenix. He's eight points behind Warren Peed. So uh, it ain't over yet, Cowboy. Uh, Warren Peed going to be looking in that rearview mirror here tonight. Now, uh, Tom McKeever, out of the uh, top five drivers here tonight, there's only one driver that finished in the top five last time out of Phoenix. That's Tom McKeever. He sits 24 points behind the leader. Uh, finished second here uh, last time. He started. Uh, he also finished 11th at Texas. So uh, started fourth, finished 11th, so went backwards just a little bit. And uh, in fourth position, Mike Kebb, he's 47 points behind the lead. Finished 16th last time out here. 12th place finish at Texas. In fifth position, Dan Mueller. Now here's where it starts getting real tight. Dan Mueller in uh, fifth position. He's 51 points behind the leader. Remember that number. He finished fourth last week at Texas. And then uh, in sixth position, Ray Moss, he's 56 points behind the lead. Remember that number. Finishing sixth uh, last week, 31st at Phoenix here last time out. Mike Kuhn sits in seventh position. He uh, finished in the top five at Texas last week. Uh, clear outside the top ten here at Phoenix last time out. 17th, 58 points behind the leader. And then in eighth position, Travis Joyner. 
Uh, Travis finished 12th here at Phoenix last time out. Remember, this is 30-some-odd weeks ago, so it's been quite a while since they've been here. Last week at Texas, he started 13th, finished in the top 10, just inside the top 10 in ninth. In ninth position in the overall here, Gary Cross, he sits down here, 79 points behind leader, pretty much done for him. If he can manage to stay up here in the top 10, I think he's got a good finish for the year. He finished, uh, he started ninth last week at Texas, but uh, fell out. I believe he had some uh, late problems uh, with the car. Texas, 19th, 25th at Phoenix last time out. And bringing up to top 10 here, John Kennedy. He's 101 points below the uh, leader. Uh, finished 11th here last time out. He uh, started 18th. Uh, he finished inside the top 10 at Texas last week. So uh, what we're looking for tonight, guys, starting in uh, about fifth position, Dan Mueller, Ray Moss, Mike Kuhn, fifth, sixth, and seventh posi uh, positions here in the points. Could be some movement here tonight at Phoenix. And, of course, uh, up at the top, Warren Pete. He's only eight points out in front of Philip Stocks. Uh, so uh, we'll see what happens here tonight. So, uh, and uh, Mike, I'm hearing, uh, you know, a little uh, scuttlebutt down there in the pits, 40 to 45 laps on tires, 75 to 80 on fuel. Don't know if they'll be able to make uh, an entire fuel run here at Phoenix. Yeah, I was talking to the guys as well, and they said the car gets really squirrely uh, on 45, 40 to 45 lap tires. So we may see some guys pitting early, you know, probably around lap 50, 55, just taking a different strategy. May see some guys try and stretch it, stretch it out and try and get a, you know, one-stop race or, you know, stretch it out so they can have better tires at the end than some of these guys. So it'll be interesting to see how the strategy plays out. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, Phoenix has always been a tough track, uh, you know, like we mentioned here at the top of the pre-race. Difficult to pass here, uh, and, you know, if you're going to do it, it's going to come uh, pretty much at the entrance going into the turns, or if you can get them coming off the turns, going to be, uh, uh, you'll see some side-by-side -side stuff probably coming off of turn four, uh, coming down the front stretch, but uh, if it ever gets three wide, like I said, it'll be by accident only. You rarely see any kind of three wide action here at Phoenix. But uh, I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and throw it on down track side. I believe Cactus Cuties are standing by with our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight O'er the ramparts we watched Were so gallantly streaming And the rocket's red glare The bombs Welcome back to Phoenix International Raceway tonight. A big thank you to the Cactus Cooties for that wonderful rendition Gentlemen, of the National Anthem. Let's take him down through the lineup here, uh, Mike. Starting out in a pole position here tonight, Mike Hebb. Mike Hebb uh, sitting fourth in the points coming into Phoenix tonight. 
outside him in that number two spot, the 85 of Tom McKeever. He was finishing second last time out at Phoenix, third in points. On the second row, Dan Mueller on the inside in that number six machine. Phil Stocks chasing down Warren Peed, eight points out. Phil Stocks starting in that fourth position on the outside. In fifth position on the inside, the 63 of Gary Madu. Outside him in six, the 75 of Terry Milford. Starting in seventh position, the 61 of Warren P, your points leader, coming into Phoenix here tonight, Mike. And in the eighth position on the outside, we've got number 19, Travis Joyner. Behind him, we got in the ninth position on the inside row, 24, Ray Moss. In the tenth position, we got a past champion, number 69, Gary Cross. And then in the 11th position, we got the 14 of John Kennedy. Falling up behind him, we got number 25, Mike Coon. Then we got 21, Paul Rogers. And rounding out the field, the 27 of Tony Bagstad as we go green. And green flag it is. Mike Hebb out to the front, getting an early jump on the rest of the field here. Dan Mueller, Mike, uh, Tom McKeever, Phillips, Stocks. And Terry Milford making up your top five now as they quickly get into some single file action here. 156 laps on the board here tonight at Phoenix International Raceway. A little action happening back here in ninth position. Gary Cross with the move on Warren Peed as he cuts to the outside up on the top. Can't get it done. Gary Cross slides it up to the wall. You want to stay out of that one as uh, Ray Moss comes alongside. So Gary Cross trying to put the move on Warren Peed. Couldn't get the job done. Ray Moss coming by for position, uh, so uh, he moves back one. But in the meantime, pretty much single file, seeing a little bit of tire smoke coming off of some of these guys as uh, we put the first lap in, or the, the uh, second lap in the books here at Phoenix Raceway, guys. Yeah, it looks like they're already kind of single filed out here. And yeah, I think him trying to do the high line that early was, was a little premature. Tires aren't heated up or anything, and it cost him. And up here in fifth position, guys, Terry Milford in that 75 machine having a difficult time coming off of turn four there. And I tell you, a lickety split down the back stretch, uh, your turn four is a little it's a little deceiving at times. You think you can take it at, at pretty good speed, at trip, but you, you really got to jump off the throttle as the 63 comes past uh, Terry Milford up here. That's going to be Gary Madu in that uh, wannabe machine, that red and white wannabe machine up here, and I'll tell you what, uh, coming down off of turn four here, heading down the front stretch, Gary Madu looking to put that thing right up uh, to the front here. Yeah, a guy I look forward to watching tonight, he's running seconds, old Dan Mueller, he's been having some good runs here lately, and um, from what I've told, I'm a teammate of theirs as well, Is he's got a really good long, long run setup, so we need to keep an eye on the six machine tonight. Tell you what, uh, the crew probably spent the last 30 plus weeks working on that car. Dan Mueller finishing 21st last time out here at Phoenix. Had a good finish at Texas last week, guys. He started 11th, finished inside the top five and fourth. So uh, Dan Mueller having a having a pretty decent season. He's sitting fifth in the overall points here in the chase. Now remember, chasing him down is Ray Moss, Mike Coon. That'll be for position when we get to Homestead. So it ain't over for those three at all by a long shot. As we put six laps in the books here at Phoenix International Raceway here, this uh, is the ESRL Elite Pro Series, sponsored by Hostile Contact Simulation Servers. And uh, I'll tell you what, uh, if you want to get game and get game of tonight with Hostile Contact Servers. Up in front, pass, or, uh, pass for uh, position here, 63 car. Going around Terry Milford for position. Gary Madu on the outside coming off of turn four. Looks like Terry's going to get it on the bottom. The 75 and 63 side by side going by the stripes. And I'll tell you what, uh, looks like Gary Madu just driving it in deep on that top side, trying to hang on to it. That's a wicked turn there, turn two, coming off going down the back stretch. So uh, the 63 and 75 machine duking it out up here for position. That'll be fourth and fifth position here. Yeah, it looks like six. Gary finally gave it to him. Yeah, Madu putting the pressure on the outside there, but, uh, you know, that's a tough thing to do here at Phoenix, and uh, Milford had the bottom bottom lane. That's going to be the oh, third line. Oh, we got a line. rack going into one. All right, uh, big one coming into turn one, trying to cycle around here and find out who it was. I think it was Madu. Yeah. 
Yeah, I see a lot of damage to his car. No caution flag. Yeah, he bounced off the wall and got her going again. And yeah, it just looked like he got uh, strung out there and, and got loose going into one. I don't know if anybody got into him or not. Yeah, a lot of damage to the uh, right rear quarter panel of that machine, uh, right there on the back end too. Spoiler is still sticking straight up in the air, and that's a must. Uh, that's a must-have here at a place like Phoenix uh, Raceway. So uh, a little bit of, of uh, uh, cosmetic damage to that 63 machine, but he's still running strong, maintaining a tenth position here at Phoenix. But uh, just in front of him, Gary Cross and uh, Travis Joyner, a lot of a lot of. Uh, Looked like tire smoke coming off that 19 machine up here in eighth position as uh, Gary Cross was running him down. Uh, now, you know, when you get right up on the bumper of these guys, they're going to have different braking points, and it almost looks like some of these guys don't have their brake bias set uh, correctly yet, guys. I've seen a lot of tire smoke coming off. It looks like the front end of these things. Yeah, sometimes they don't get their setup just right uh, with these chassis that uh, you'll smoke that left front tire pretty easy. They're going to have to blow them way down at this track. A lot of brake usage. Back here in 11th position watching the 25 car of uh, Mike Kuhn. He was putting the pressure on the uh, 63 of Madu up here a little bit ago, but I'll tell you what, Madu able to get around for position. He's now in 10th. Uh, Mike Kuhn uh, going through the high side here. He's back to 12th as uh, Paul Rogers in the 21 machine goes by along with Tony Bagstead. 27 car going past Mike Kuhn too. Kuhn up on the outside. Going to get up in the mar marbles if he's not careful. Come off the turn four, heading down the front stretch here. Kuhn almost, Kuhn almost looked like he was giving up that position. And he may, early on, his setup may not be just right. Uh, you know, it, once you get in the race and get in that dirty air, it, it doesn't handle the same as when you're practicing always. And, man, he just may be filling it out and waiting to make some adjustments on that car. You bet. Uh, we've got three cars uh, right up front. Mike Hebb, Dan Mueller, and Tom McKeever make up your uh, top three. And then uh, almost five seconds off the pace, your next car in line is going to be a Warren Peed, the fifth position car. So Warren Peed, your points leader, uh, kind of falling off the pace here. Now, uh, with 14 laps in the books here, uh, you know, one of two things is happening. Either we got an ill-handling car happening here, or crew chief's telling them to, hey, just take it easy. A lot of laps left. Let's just uh, wait it out here. Let's see what the car's going to do. Get us a good, uh, you know, a good record of what's happening with the car. So uh, you know, when pit stops come around, we can make whatever adjustments we need to make. So Warren Peed, about five seconds, almost five and a half seconds, more than five and a half seconds back, sitting back here in fifth position, that 61 machine. Yeah, and he's running about three tenths slower than the leaders. Leaders run about 27 flat uh, second laps right now. He's his last lap was uh, 27.3, so he's running a little bit slower. He's going to have to make some adjustments on that if he plans on winning this race tonight. Yeah, you got that right. And, uh, you know, we were talking earlier, uh, hearing from the uh, garage and 40 to 45 laps on tires. Look out when it gets uh, to that point. It's going to get wicked loose on these guys uh, from what we're hearing. 75 to 80 laps on fuel. I don't think we're ever going to get to that point. Tires will wear out long before that uh, comes around. But uh, I'll tell you what, things are looking pretty sweet here at uh, Phoenix International Raceway. 17 laps in the books here. And again, race being sponsored by Hostile Contact Simulation Servers. This is Chase Race number nine. One to go when we leave Phoenix. Homestead, Miami Speedway. That'll be next Sunday night right here live on ETV Live. Join us right here about uh, 8 o'clock uh, next Sunday. And uh, we'll finish this thing out. But uh, in the meantime, I'll tell you, Mike Hebb got to jump on the field from the get-go. Took that green flag. He's pretty much walking away with it. Chasing him down is Dan Mueller up here in second. Tom McKeever in third. Philip Stocks in fourth. Fifth is Warren Peed. Let's go uh, six to ten here, guys. Ray Moss, uh, Ray Moss, who finished 31st last year, uh, last time at uh, Phoenix, sitting in sixth position that 24 car. Now Ray had a pretty decent finish at Texas last week. He finished sixth. He started 16th, so a good improvement there from Texas. And uh, moving back one more notch here, Terry Milford. Uh, he's in that 75 machine. Uh, remember watching him in the 63 duking it out here just uh, about. Oh, about six, seven laps ago. Uh, 
Uh, Terry Milford having a pretty decent night here tonight, just kind of maintaining uh, a position here. And then move it down to uh, the 19 car, 8th position, Travis Joyner. Travis sitting in the 8th position on the points. He finished 12 here at Phoenix, so not a bad run. 33 cars started this race uh, last time out. And uh, so Travis Joyner with a 12th place finish and a 10th place finish, uh, or 9th place finish in Texas last week. Gary Cross uh, in ninth position here, guys, in that 69 car. Gary Cross, 25th place finish last time out here at Phoenix, but I'll tell you what, uh, not so good at Texas U. I believe he had some issues there. And uh, sitting in 10th, Gary Madu, of course, uh, we saw his little interaction with the wall. He's got a couple of souvenirs sitting on that passenger seat as he fights for, for uh, position here, slipping back one notch. He's going to let the uh, 27 car, Tony Backstead, move, in, move out in front of him. Yeah, he's probably just uh, trying to ride around and keep that car out of the wall any more than possible, praying for a caution to get that thing fixed up. You bet. And uh, I don't know, I haven't heard that back door open yet, so I don't know whether Joel's uh, made it back up the stairs here, back up in the booth there or not, but uh, we'll keep an eye out for him for sure. Joel Brown, uh, I guess we could call him the code master, as I understand it, Mike. Yeah, Joel works on our physics, and he's an uh, actual real-life uh, NASCAR engineer. Uh, he's worked from late models all the way up to the Cup Series. Uh, got somebody that just went hot into three up in the wall, our, our uh, fourth-place driver there. That's going to be Dan Mueller uh, having some difficulties. So we've got 24 laps on these tires already. So we're about the halfway point uh, for these tires. So start looking for issues. And that's exactly what we're going to see coming off these turns. Uh, you know, especially turn four is uh, Tom McKeever gets a souvenir. But uh, what's going to happen uh, as these guys start getting loose, the cars are going to start pushing up towards the wall, especially coming off of turn four. Tendency to get back on the throttle just a little bit too early. And uh, that's usually what happens. Turn four uh, from the cockpit of the car, kind of a funky looking turn, but uh, you really got to be careful on that one. They'll come down the backstretch, that new reconfigured backstretch, kind of a dog leg right there, just uh, not quite in the middle, uh, but then uh, kind of a short run down into turn four uh, as they uh, come on around, then down the front stretch into turn one. Turn, turn one's a, a pretty easy turn, just stay off the throttle, let it roll on around, jump back on the throttle, Hang on to that steering wheel, Cowboy, because I'll tell you what, get through that dog leg, you can slide up and, and uh, tag that wall pretty easy. Oh, yeah, and especially if you get on the outside going through that dog leg. That's, that's a tough to get squeezed through there. It's a lot better with the new configuration. Got a little bit more banking to get you through there, but very unique track, flat, you know, flat corners. It, it makes it tough to hold that car down to the line. Yeah, it is. Uh, you know, gone with the rumble strips there in that dog leg uh, with the little grassy area right next to it. And, uh, you know, countless times running over the top of those rumble strips. And, uh, you know, you see the left side of that car just come completely uh, off the ground and get airborne as they, uh, you know, uh, manipulate that turn, that dog leg there on the back strip. But I'll tell you what, 27 last in the books here at Phoenix International Raceway. Why don't we go ahead and step away? We're going to take our first break when we come back. Probably going to see some green flag pit stops coming our way, so uh, don't wander off, Cowboy. We're here tonight with the ESRL Elite Pro Series from Phoenix International Raceway. Don't wander off. We'll be back. Hey, dude, are you ready to rock and roll? If that's cool, then you need to do it over at HD Radio Network. HD Radio Network, four stations broadcasting 24-7 with everything from metal favorites to the 80s classic rock like legendary Leonard Skinner, Electric Light Orchestra, Foreigner, and bone-rattling, skull-crushing rock and roll on hard-driving radio. Bear Factory, Stone Temple Pilots, Def Leppard, and a whole lot more. HDRadioNetwork.com. Take your pick and rock your brains out, dude.
Stock Car Evolution 2012 brings the intensity, grit, and roaring sound of NASCAR to the PC and R factor. You'll quickly find that it is a highly detailed simulation of one of the most detailed and realistic to grace the PC. Stock Car Evolution is a scratch built stock car simulator mod for R factor, which has been in development since 2005. It uses real world information to develop the physics in all three NASCAR series, resulting in the most realistic driving experience possible. A dedicated team of developers, from former Microsoft and NASCAR software engineers to software developers, adds to what is already the most realistic NASCAR simulator on the planet. Simply put, Stock Car Evolution is a true stock car simulator. Stock Car Evolution 2012's new level of detail in both physics and graphics, combined with years of development, make this version the best stock car racing simulator to date. Stock Car Evolution would also like to thank all of the leagues that tested our beta versions at ESRL and provided valuable information and feedback. You can't get the thrilling sense of speed, the ever-present danger, the feel of the track, the nerves of steel required while watching it on TV. Stock Car Evolution 2012 does all that and more, offering up thrilling racing action with the realism that hardcore fans crave. Do you have what it takes? Find out at StockCarEvolution.com. All right, and we are back live here at Phoenix International Raceway. Under caution, it's going to be the 63 machine, lap uh, 33. Turn four, guys. Uh, now, this is probably a condition of loose tires. Of course, uh, he was have, fighting a nil handling car here just uh, about eight or ten laps ago, Mike. Uh, 63 car, Gary Maudu, uh taking it around, bringing out our first caution here at Phoenix. Yeah, going into turn three, he looked okay, and then about the middle of the turn, he's probably too tight. And just probably overturned it and it snapped loose on him and he just spun around. And uh, looks like everybody's uh, pretty much uh, made their pits off. John Kennedy moved him up a notch. 14 car out in front. Mike Hebb in second. Tom McKeever still hanging out up here in the uh, top five. Philip Stocks, Travis Joyner now moving up here inside the top five. Gary Cross in sixth position. But uh, first caution of the night, uh, probably came right, the, uh, right at the uh, right time, about 33 laps in the books here at Phoenix. So we were talking earlier about the tire wear, and, uh, you know, 40 laps, 45 laps, uh, this one came just a little bit sooner than that, but uh, it's one of those saved by the bell cautions, I'm sure. You get, uh, you know, uh, about 10 more laps, and these guys would have started getting wicked loose, and, of course, the risk factor goes up at that point but uh getting set to one lap uh, to go here uh, as the call was just made to the pace car lights are out as these guys get ready to uh get back into a double file restart heb uh, is going to choose the bottom lane here on this restart he will have mckeever up on the outside stocks and joiner in behind him so uh warren peed nowhere to be found as uh we get this thing uh, back rolling again. Uh, actually, we can take it back to the ninth position here before we go green. Warren Peed, he's your points leader coming in here tonight. Remember, Philip Stocks up there in third, only eight points out in front of Peed coming to Phoenix here tonight. So this is a huge night for that 20, uh, 29 machine uh, up here in this second row. Pace car pulling off. Mike Kebb going to pick up that green flag, and we'll be back to racing here at Phoenix uh, here uh, just momentarily. Good uh, run by the 85 car on the outside. Backs off the throttle, however. So uh, Philip Stocks uh, thinking twice about that one as well. McKeever still stuck up on the outside. After they're going to try to fill that gap between Stocks and Hebb, and he does head down to backstretch. So uh, off and running here again at Phoenix International Raceway. Ooh, uh, we got Gary Cross in the high line there. He got in the marbles a little bit. He did keep it out of the wall though. 
Yeah, I copy that. I tell you what, uh, wicked loose up there on the top near that wall. You get into those marbles, and that's exactly what you're going to see. Slip sliding around, but manages to hang on to it. That 69 machine at Gary Cross uh, now in seventh position. So uh, positions, you got to get them early because later on it's going to be a little bit difficult to, uh, to do that. We saw what happens with uh, the 63 machine going around coming off of turn four. We could lose tires. That comes from probably running them off just a little bit too early. So, uh, you know, Warren P. we were talking about him. Uh, oh, we got that a wreck. We got a wreck. And a wow. caution is out. That's going to be the 69 car of Gary Cross, guys, uh, here in seventh position. Let's see if we can roll it back here and figure out what happened to that uh, 69 car. And it looked like the 24 Ray Moss might have gotten the back of him. Yeah, it does uh, It does look that way. It looks like it's off of turn four here, just going into turn four. Kind of in the middle of turn four here. Yeah, it just looked like the 24 had a lot of momentum and the 69 was struggling and he just got in the back of it. And that's going to take the 69 car and uh, turn him around. He's going to go uh, back in into that outside wall and uh, a little bit of co cosmetic damage to the back end of that machine, but uh, he'll be able to get it down pit road and uh, get some of that sheet metal pulled back out. Uh, not a whole lot of damage to the front end of that uh, 24 car. Well, second caution of the night here, guys, coming out at uh, Phoenix. Yeah, it looks like the 75 of Terry Milford ha has pulled it behind the wall and has his car in the garage already tonight after 32 laps. And uh, Terry Milford... Uh, uh, Terry Milford not in the uh, not in the points running here tonight, guys. But uh, was 15th in the overall points uh, as far as the you know the entire series goes. So uh, not a bad uh, finish for the season for him. But uh, you're absolutely right, Terry Milford uh, taking it behind the wall. Going to call it a night here at Phoenix. With 41 laps in the books here, guys, I'll tell you what, uh, Hostile Contact Server is sponsoring the race, uh, actually all the chase races here tonight, uh, with the ESRL Elite Pro Series. Uh, went over to their website here uh, just recently in a whole new look, and I'll tell you what, uh, if you're looking for a gaming server, Hostile Contact Simulation Servers, uh, quality, reliable, affordable, and not just gaming servers, they also provide voice over IP, the uh, you know for uh, like TeamSpeak, Ventrilo, and uh, there's another new one floating out there too. I can't remember the name of it, but uh, I tell you they've got the uh, most up to date and uh, uh, with the games, uh, the hostile uh, contact servers, all the shooter games like America's Army, all the Battlefield releases, Call of Duty releases, Counter Strike. If you're into those shooter games, also feature the uh, the racing games, uh, Arca, R Factor, Live for Speed, so on and so forth soon to be released R Factor 2. And I'll tell you what, if they ain't got it, I'm sure you can get it uh, through Hostile Contact Simulation Servers. Get old motor, HostileContact.com. Sponsoring the Chase Series race here at ESRL for Stock Car Evolution. As we go back to Green Flag Racing here, Heb picking it up one more time with McKeever on the outside. And I'll tell you what, Philip Stocks just... Uh, Hanging in there, guys. The 19 car of uh, Travis Joyner up on the outside here, two by two, going off turn two down the back stretch here through that dog leg. Uh, I've been like, pretty impressed with Mike Hebb tonight. He's uh, led all but one lap, I think. Uh, Kennedy stayed out to lead that one lap under that first caution. He looks pretty impressive tonight. Kennedy looking for uh, a bonus point or two tonight. Kennedy coming into the uh, chase here in 10th. Uh, 101 points behind the leader, so uh, not going to be a whole lot of improvement by the time we get to Homestead, but hey, every point counts. Single file uh, looking back here. And I think we got Joel Brown back. It looks like he stepped back through the screen door. I'm here. 
Yeah, I heard the squeaky door. I heard, I heard them squeaky hinges back there. Joel Brown uh, joining us up here in the booth. Watching in 10th position here, 21 car of Paul Rogers. Now, Gary Madu on a tear here one more time, Cowboy. Madu uh, fighting an ill-handling car in the uh, before that first caution. Of course, he brought the first one out on lap 33. But uh, Gary Madu uh, hanging out in the top 10 uh, for now in ninth position was duking it out with the 21 car of Paul Rogers. So uh, Paul Rogers now staring at the bumper of that 63 car. Single file all the way back. Let's step over here to uh, Joel Brown here for just a minute. Uh, guys were telling us uh, 40 to 45 laps on tires. Uh, not going to see a fuel run here tonight at all. But, uh, you know, watching Warren Peed here, Joel, uh, that first uh, the first 30 laps or so, he just kind of spent most of his time back here tucked away in the middle, almost five seconds off the leaders. Uh, what do you think is going through his mind, or is his crew chief telling him to just back it down here a little bit, and take care of business, or what do you think is going on there? Well, if we get some long runs, tire management is going to be huge. Uh, these tires fall off pretty good, and the guys that can save their tires a little bit, they can come on real strong after about 20 laps. And, I mean, you can gain five seconds real quick if those guys have, you know, burn all the goody off the tires. Yeah, and, uh, you know, Warren Pete finishing just inside the top ten here last time out at Phoenix in ninth position. And Philip Stocks uh, finishing in eighth, respectively. I mean, you're talking... <laughs> You're talking uh, one and two here as far as the points go. Stocks is only eight points out of Warren Peed, but you see a couple of different strategies working out here. Phil Stocks trying to hang out up there in the top five. In the meantime, uh, Warren Peed uh, back here a couple of notches, back here in six. Almost looks like Warren Peed just kind of minding his own business. So uh, a couple of different kind of strategies working out here tonight at Phoenix. Yeah, I mean, if you can just kind of hang where you can see the leaders and just keep yourself in a position where you don't get into any trouble and manage your tires, you're going to have a real good finish. It's a, it's a tough track. It, depending on how the guys set up their cars, if they think there's going to be cautions, they'll have a short run set up. But looks like Warren might have a better strategy to where if we get a nice long run set up, he's going to go right to the front. And he just gained a spot as well. All right, Warren Pete going around the 19. Travis Joyner for position, so move Warren Pete up to the top five here. Another big shout out to my little buddy Dalton England over there. I see he finally made it. Uh, I think the uh, shout out I gave him during pre-race, he might not have been uh, tuned in yet. But uh, how you doing tonight, uh, Dalton? I see you over there in the chat room. So uh, glad you could join us here tonight. I don't. I, I think you're off school tomorrow, if I'm not mistaken. I think tomorrow's a holiday for uh, a lot of these school kids. Yeah, give a shout out to all the veterans out there, you know, if it weren't for them, we couldn't do this stuff. You know, real life racing and, you know, this online sim racing. And thanks for everybody that served. Absolutely. And uh, ninth position, guys, uh, so we can get uh, get John to get on that 69 car down here. Gary Cross, it looks like he's uh, having some difficulty here. He was right up on the outside of the 14 machine. And John Kennedy looked like he was going to take a shot couldn't get the job done. Here he comes again as Kennedy plays with that apron line down there coming off of turn four. Gary Cross looking to go too wide, coming off turn four, can't get the job done. We've been watching this all night long. That outside lane just does not have it. You just don't have the horsepower. Contact with the 14 as the 14 kind of slipped up into the 69. And of course, uh, that's going to bring, uh, I believe that's Ray Moss in a 24 car down alongside the uh, 69 car. So uh, a little bit of a battle going on here. 53 laps in the books here at Phoenix, guys. And I'll tell you, Ray Moss not giving it up here with uh, Gary Cross up on the outside. Well, that last big corner, three and four, is progressive bank. So there is a high line there. You can get a run, but you got to set them up early through one and that kink before you can even think about getting on that high line on that last corner. You know, guys, uh, I'm pretty much old school, and uh, I have not raced this new configuration here at Phoenix. I used to love the old Phoenix track. I had a lot of luck there when I used to uh, do the sim race and stuff. And I mean, it was a tough track then. Looks like it's still a tough track now, but uh, I just I don't have any experience on that new configuration. So, uh, you know, if the banking helps, uh, Gary Cross trying to put it together uh, up here. But it uh, looks like he manages to uh, uh, hold Ray Moss off back here in ninth position. But uh, I tell you, a lot of, looks like a lot of tire smoke coming off that 69 car getting into turn four. 
Well, yeah, and they both got back around the 14 of John Kennedy. Uh, Kennedy looks a little better in that first run. He was kind of running around way back in last place there. and uh, Looks like they made some better adjustments. Um, but, yeah, Gary Cross held him off and made that outside line work. Kennedy looks a little loose on entry going into one. Yeah, and you know, I'm starting to see, uh, I think it's a 69 car. I'm watching here. I, I'm, I'm seeing a whole lot of uh, tire smoke coming off that 69 car. So uh, as uh, Gary Cross goes way up to the outside, coming through turn two and two and three here, down the back shot, Moss is going to get position here. Moss, uh, or uh, uh, Ray Moss up here in eighth position. So... Uh, Gary Cross having some difficulty here. I got to think something's going on with the tires on that 69 machine. He slips back to ninth position. Yeah, he's probably just driving it in too hard instead of floating it in and letting it roll around. And you get that sometimes at this track. You just try and overdrive it, and it's, it makes it tough. You know, the old configuration. I'm coming down this back stretch. I mean, yeah. You know, if you tucked it into the inside, kept the uh, kept the left side tires on the rumble strips coming off that uh, dog leg. Uh, you know, you get into turns turn three and four down there. It's really deceiving. I mean, it looks like a big wide sweeping turn that you can almost keep your your, your foot in the throttle, but you can't. You got to get it right down to the apron line and get off that throttle. Let it roll. And then uh, be gentle on the pickup because if you got on it too soon, well, I tell you what, that outside wall came up, look at he split, and uh, you were going to get a souvenir for the night. But uh, like I said, I don't have any experience on this new configuration. As uh, go up here to 11th position, 21 car, Paul Rogers putting the pressure on the 14. Oh, the 14 pulls to the inside. He's going to let uh, let 21 have that position up here, guys. Something's going on with that 14 car, guys. That John Kennedy machine. I see him getting looser and looser. <laughs> Yeah, me too. And you, you know, you're talking about entering into turn three there. Well, in this new configuration, they've raised the back stretch, so you're going downhill into it now, and it's even more deceiving than it was before, I think. Sixty laps, sixty-one laps in the books here, guys. And I tell you, we're about twenty-one, about twenty laps or so into this tire run, so. Uh, you know, we're, we're not quite at the point yet where we should see some mishandling cars because of uh, traction issues or handling issues, you know, with the tires. So John Kennedy uh, must be fighting uh, some other kind of a condition with that machine of his, that 14 car, slipping back to 13th now. So Kennedy obviously having some trouble. Moving up to 10th position, Gary Madu struggling to hang on to a top 10 finisher at Phoenix. Remember, he tangled with the wall back on lap 33. Quite a bit of damage uh, still uh, showing on the uh, right rear quarter panel of that uh, wannabe uh, red and white wannabe machine down here. But uh, take it back out in front. Mike Hebb putting on a school here at uh, Phoenix International Raceway, still holding off Tom McKeever up here in front. Just uh, kind of running bumper to bumper here. Philip Stocks. Philip Stocks is the uh, the man uh, hunting down Warren Pete tonight, sitting eight points off the uh, off the leader. So uh, Stocks having a pretty decent run up here in third yeah, I believe as they run he's only about uh, five points uh, behind Warren at the moment as they run on the track so he definitely wants to try and pick up as many points as, as he can heading into Homestead that'll make his chances a little bit better to try and surpass him for the championship next week well, i tell you what, John Kennedy's car ain't getting no better. I think he's got the right setup, but for a different track. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's, uh, he's slipping backwards uh, pretty good here, all the way back to 13th position uh, here on track, guys. So uh, Kennedy way off the pace. 16 seconds, that's about a half a lap here compared to the leaders up here. So uh, he is absolutely struggling. Last car on the lead lap. Uh, and I believe he is absolutely struggling just to hang on to it. 65 laps in the books here at Phoenix International Raceway. Of course, tonight's race being sponsored by Hostel Contact Simulation Servers. HostelContact.com. This is the ESRL Elite Pro Series. This is the best of the best coming out of Stock Car Evolution. And I'll tell you, you got to check those guys out too. I got the, uh, the two builders up here in the booth with me tonight, Mike Schreiner and Joel Brown. And uh, I'll tell you, it's come a long ways. And, uh, you know, if, if you want to get into uh, some heavy-duty racing, 
join this stock car evolution. It brings the intensity, the grit, the roaring sound of NASCAR to the PC, our factor. Uh, and this this is a uh, kind of a homegrown, scratch-built stock car simulator for uh, our factor Of course, uh, everybody's familiar with our factor out there that does any kind of sim racing. Been in development since 2005, and uh, Mike Schreiner and Joel Brown, I guess like ETV Live, we've always been in beta test since day one. So uh, is that how we equate Stock Car Evolution as well? Um, yeah, I'd say so. Uh, like you said, we've been in development since 05. Uh, and the reason why we call it Stock Car Evolution, we try and evolve uh, with what NASCAR does each year. Of course, we're always going to be a step behind you know trying to catch up with changes and you know rules changes and stuff like that that they make and I think we do a pretty good job at keeping that one step behind and trying to be the leaders in you know the NASCAR simulation or mods for our factor and, and we feel like we do a pretty good job um, we've got a few things in the works for 2013 um, to improve this even more and make it even more realistic but yet still fun you know, that's the important part, uh, you know, some of the pre-race discussion we were having here before we uh, turn the cameras on here tonight. You know, talking about that other simulation uh, racing game out there. Uh, you know, uh, quite, a, quite a lot of differences between the two, but uh, I'll tell you what, uh, if you're doing this for the fun, Stock Car Evolution, that's it, Cowboy. Do you have what it takes? You can check it out over at StockCarEvolution.com, and I understand a lot of new things coming, uh, coming this way in 2013, so... Uh, uh, keep checking over there, stockcarrevolution.com. In the meantime, out here on the track, guys, Mike Hev is just putting uh, putting on a show out here. He's got Tom McKeever in that 85 car staying right with him. McKeever looking to the inside, coming down the back stretch here for position. Mike Hev on the outside. McKeever's got the preferred line on the bottom off of turn four. So for the first time tonight, Mike Hev is going to lose the lead. Tom McKeever is going to take it at the start finish line, score one for the 85. Philip Stocks is falling right behind him on the low line and uh, Heb will probably give that up and just fall in and ride around now for a little bit and probably needs to make a few adjustments on this car for the next run. You bet about 30, uh, 30 plus laps on this set of tires guys. Remember the last caution lap 41 and 24 and 69 getting into it. Oh as the caution comes out here at Phoenix for the third time. Trying to cycle around and uh, figure out who that was, guys. Not seeing it here. Well, it looks like uh, Gary Maydew just lost it going into the corner. Again. <laughs> see if we can't roll it backwards here and uh, see what happens. Looks like it's uh, coming down the back stretch going into turn four. Same place as last time, guys, and uh, he's just going to lose the back end. It's going to go around. He keeps it off the wall. Oh, close call there. But uh, manages. looks like he manages to keep it off the wall. So uh, no harm, no foul. Just a little bit of uh, rubber wore off those tires. But the caution number three coming out here at Phoenix International Raceway. Uh, it looks like there's a couple of cars that were really happy that caution came out. That was about the uh, amount of laps into a run where if your car wasn't just right it wasn't going to get no better. You bet and uh, Mike Hebb, Tom McKeever uh, in their pit stops are going to make uh, looks like it's going to be a four tire change for both of them of course uh, why not I mean you know Phoenix International Raceway you do not want to just risk this thing with two tire stops so uh, McKeever down and out he's going to get out first Philip Stocks to the line here. Looks like Philip Stocks going to beat them all off pit road. So Philip Stocks, he will start the race and uh, restart here in first. Tom McKeever second off pit road, and uh, Mike Hebb uh, fourth. So uh, and Mike Coon uh, did stay out. He picked up a couple of extra bonus points. He'll be coming down. So uh, coming to the green flag, it'll be Philip Stocks, Tom McKeever, and Mike Hebb. Let's take this opportunity to step away. Let's take another commercial break. Well, let's tell you what, let's stay, let's stay right with it. Looks like a short caution. We just got the one to go here at Phoenix. I'll tell you what, we can do another online plug here, on-air plug. Let's talk about the VRC Mark II Virtual Racing Seat. This is a simulation racing cockpit 
created and designed by championship race car driver Bob Earl. Now, who better than a real race car driver to design a simulation racing cockpit? Bob Earl certainly knows what it means to have a comfortable racing seat. The design features a fully adjustable seat and frame, additional monitor stand and shifter mount sold separately depending upon the configuration that you need. High quality and a very affordable alternative. Christmas is coming guys. 349 bucks plus shipping. You can see it at BobEarlRacing.com. And uh, I tell you, Christmas being right around the corner as we get set to take the green flag. Philip Stocks out front for the first time tonight. Tom McKeever, Mike Cab tucked back in that second roll. McKeever up on the outside as we get back to racing. A 27 car watching all that happen. He's uh, up on the top. That's Tony Bagstead uh, for fourth. Warren Pede, your points that are alongside the 27 car. Going into turn two, coming off. It's going to be Warren Pede with position horsepower paying off here. But uh, up in front, Mike Hebb desperately trying to get back up to the bumper of that 29 Now we got machine. the six car spinning. He got way loose, and we got Boom. a caution. Caution coming out on the track. Dan Mueller in that six machine, guys. And it looks like Ray, uh, Ray Moss uh, might have checked everybody up there, guys, watching it on the replay. Yeah, it looked like the six just got on his brakes hard and that got him around. Uh, he was just checking up to keep from running into him. Yeah, Joiner involved 69 car up there on, on the outside. Uh, it almost, almost looked like Ray Moss might have got in just a little bit too heavy. He starts drifting up into the 19, uh, kind of woes it up there a little bit. And then, uh, here, of course, here comes the six car and uh, plows right into the back. I mean, that's just kind of a racing deal. That's what happens. Uh, here at place like Phoenix. So we're caution number four here at uh, Phoenix uh, Raceway. All right, pit road is open, so it's just a question of uh, who's going to do it and who isn't. Why don't we take this opportunity to step away? Let's take a commercial break. You're watching live, ETV Live, Cowboy. It's the only choice from Phoenix International Raceway. Don't wander off. We'll be right back. R Factor 2 servers now available at hospitalcontact.com. You order your server now at the introductory price of only $1.49 USD per slot. We will automatically upgrade your server to the full release R Factor 2 game as soon as it is released from beta. Hostelcontact.com now offering R Factor 2 beta servers for all pre release orders. Our pre release price is $1.49 a slot. This price will be adjusted as we evaluate resource usage, racers, anti cheat, and R Factor hot lots will be available soon. Hey dude, are you ready to rock and roll? If that's cool, then you need to do it over at HD Radio Network. HD Radio Network, four stations broadcasting 24-7 with everything from metal favorites to the 80s classic rock like legendary Leonard Skinner, Electric Light Orchestra, Foreigner, and bone-rattling, skull-crushing rock and roll on hard-driving radio. Bear Factory, Stone Temple Pilots, Def Leppard, and a whole lot more. HDRadioNetwork.com. Take your pick and rock your brains out, dude. We're back to green flag racing here as Philip Stocks takes the green flag, heading into turn one. On his outside is the 11 of Mike Hebb. Wow, Mike's making that outside line work pretty good. Yeah, he's had a strong car all night. Um, 
McKeever as well. He's just been sticking up there with them. Uh, McKeever's got a really good long, uh, long run setup, and now we got Warren Pede uh, up there in fourth position. He's just methodically been working his way up and hanging tough. So we'll see what he does here uh, in this next run. Looks like we got another caution. Looks like Dan again. Yep, Dan touched the apron, trying to. Cars are kind of checking up a little bit. Touched the apron, looked like he just spun around, didn't touch anything. Yeah, I was watching him replay. Looked like he got a good run again and kind of checked up, got on the apron, and then spun out. So, boy, those guys were lucky to swing by there. A couple people just barely missed hitting him. Yeah, I'm sure Dan's a little frustrated. He's been doing really, really good. And the other nights are racing at Phoenix, and I was kind of surprised that we're not seeing him up front. Yeah, I agree. Uh, when you were out earlier, Joel, we're talking about. I, I said Dan's guy to look out for tonight. He's been really hot here the last, you know, five six weeks, having some really good runs, and he's just having some trouble tonight. I got in the wall early, and it's probably affected his downforce on his car, and he's just not running as strong as we've seen him run here, you know, last few weeks. Yeah, it looks like he's got some right front fender damage. I'm, I'm sure that's not making it any better. Looks like the top four stayed out and everybody else pitted. So they're going to have a little bit fresher tires to go a little bit longer here on this run if we can stay green for a while. Wow, how did Mike Hebb fall back to fifth? I'm not sure. Let me let me uh, take a look at the replay and see if we can see what happened to him there. We'll be going green next time by. Uh, I think Travis maybe stayed out or did some strategy stuff. Mike Hebb's in fourth now. Yeah, we got the 21 Paul Rogers doing a last minute pit stop there. So the cars get lined up for a double file restart, heading down the back stretch here, getting ready to go green. Race cars heading off. Got Philip Stocks taking the green flag, heading into turn one with McKeever on the outside and the 19 of Travis Joyner on the inside. All right, back in the saddle again. I'll tell you what, a little bit of uh, technical difficulty there with my headset, but uh, back at, back at it again here. Philip Stocks, Tom McKeever, Travis Joyner, Warren P, the points leader, fourth position. He'd been coming up. Uh, through the uh, through the line here since about the well actually since the beginning of this thing here tonight guys uh, Warren P spending the first part uh, up until now kind of in the middle of the pack but uh, slowly making his way forward now Mike Hebb who led most of the uh, first part of this race stuck back here in fifth position so yeah he's pretty much got the best of the best up here P Joyner McKeever he's got to get by all these guys if he wants to uh, get back to the front Yeah, it looked like there uh, on the restart going into uh, turns one and two, looked like McKeever bobbled a little bit, um, almost lost it, but he did hold on to it and held his position. You bet, and uh, if you're around things back here in the back, 69 car Gary Cross, he'd been having his difficulty here tonight as well. Remember way back on lap 41, it was a 24-69 that got into it. But uh, Gary Cross hanging on to position back here at sixth position. 
Ray Moss, uh, the uh, 24 machine, uh, in behind him as well. So uh, Moss looking for uh, a decent run here at Phoenix tonight. But out in front, Philip Stocks holding them all off. Now, uh, Philip Stocks, eight points in back of Warren Peak coming into Phoenix tonight. This is going to take us all the way to Homestead, so it ain't over yet, Cowboy. There's still a lot of work to be done by both of those teams. But uh, for right now, Philip Stocks, he's got the edge over Warren Peak here tonight at Phoenix. Warren Peak back in fourth position, so he's working his way forward, guys. Yeah, I'm sitting here watching the 69 car. And he is abusing the tires, locking up his brakes. He's got something wrong with that setup that's just causing him to lock up in every corner and in the, you know, backstretch kink. Ninety-one laps in the books here at Phoenix International Raceway, guys, and uh, I tell you, it's pretty much single file. And I kind of lost my place where I was there, but uh, I'll tell you what, I know we were just uh, coming back off of a caution there. I believe that was probably going to be caution number five, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, duking it out here up here in front, Warren Peed, fourth position, going after the 19, Travis Joyner up here. Joyner sitting up there in third, side by side, down in front. Joyner's going to get off the gas early, get right back on it in the middle of turn two, but Warren Peed's going to have the edge. Coming off turn two, you're down the back stretch. So, uh, and then here comes the 11 machine. Mike Hev side by side with the 19. He'll have position going off into turn three. Travis Joyner stuck up in that high line and that banking coming off turn four just is not going to be of any help. So, uh, Travis Joyner slipping back to fifth position, guys. Yeah, it looks like he's holding up the 69 a little bit and. Uh, if the patience gets to wearing thin with the 69, uh, he'll probably get in the back of him. Yeah, you know, and this is, uh, I, you know, I, I'm not sure anymore what qualifies as a short tracker, but, uh, or, or, uh, or anything anymore, but uh, Phoenix Raceway, it's a one-mile track, short track attitude here for sure, guys. This is a tight little track, difficult to get around, as we've been watching here all night long. Hard to get positions. The guys are trying to make that top line work off of uh, turns three and four. Some can, some can't, but uh, I'll tell you what, Cowboy, when they get bumper to bumper, they're getting right after it. But in the meantime, Philip Stocks holding down the lead out here in front. Tom McKeever uh, right on behind. Now, Tom McKeever's been doing a fantastic job staying right up here in front all night long from the get-go. Yeah, it looks like, uh, you know, Mike Hebb's falling back a little bit. He dominated the first half of this race. And, you know, either he's not keeping up with the track with his changes or... Uh, he's made some bad changes, and the other guys are making good changes. Uh, you know, he's still up there, but he's not running like he was earlier. You bet. And uh, trying to get my paperwork uh, situated here again. Uh, you know, uh, Stocks, McKeever, Warren P. Your top three. Mike Hebb. Uh, Mike Hebb uh, again finished 16th here last time out. Finished 12th at Texas last week, so uh, Mike Hebb looking to turn things around here. 47 points behind the leader. You know, he, uh, I, you know, you could probably throw him in the mixer with uh, Dan Mueller, Ray Moss, uh, Mike Kuhn, all of these guys. Uh, you know, let's say about six, seven points apart from one another here in, in the standings. So, you know, between fourth and uh, seventh position, it's all about finishing position here, uh, you know, in this chase series. One more race to go next week at Homestead Miami Speedway, and it will all shake out at the uh, conclusion of that race. But in the meantime, it's Philip Stock's turn to lead this pack around Phoenix International Raceway here tonight, guys. Warren Pete slowly catching up to uh, to Stocks. Eight points separates those two drivers. But uh, I tell you what, they got to get between, uh, uh, get past uh, uh, Tom McKeever up there, guys. Oh, uh, yeah, I agree. Uh, he, he's starting to make his run, and right now is when you want to start doing it. Uh, laps are winding down. And, you know, a lot of these guys that aren't in the hunt for the championship anymore, they, they're racing for pride to try and gain as many spots as they can and, you know, finish up uh, higher up in the final positions for the season and, um, you know, get up on the stage, the top ten get up on the stage. And, you know, you, you want to be fourth or fifth instead of eighth or ninth and you know it's a matter of pride for these guys 
Absolutely. And I'll tell you, Tom McKeever, he finished second here last time out. This has uh, been, what, uh, 34 weeks ago or so? And uh, so Tom McKeever, he's no stranger to uh, this front row up here at Phoenix. So he's uh, absolutely putting the pressure on the 29 car as we speak, coming off turn four, heading down the front stretch here. Tom McKeever, uh, he's looking for a big move here. Uh, as uh, we uh, conclude the scene and go to Phoenix next week as well. He's 24 points behind the lead, but he has the advantage. Uh, he's the only car in the top five here in the points to finish in the top five last time out of Phoenix. So McKeever's got a huge advantage coming into Phoenix here tonight. Well, I'll tell you what, Dan Mueller, Dan Mueller's starting to show some pretty good strength here. He's running the same speeds as the leaders. And that's real surprising with the damage he had gotten earlier in the race. Uh, looks like his pit crews fixed that thing up a little bit, made him a little more competitive. Yeah, you know, uh, a little bit of damage to the uh, right in the middle of the rear end of that machine, that number six car back here in sixth position. So uh, as he uh, comes right up on the bumper of the 11 of Mike, he or uh, 19 car of uh, Travis Joyner up here. But uh, Dan Mueller, as uh, long as that spoiler stays uh, right up in the middle of the air there, uh, you know, he's doing pretty good. A little bit of body damage on the back end right underneath isn't really going to make that much difference here to one mile track like Phoenix. But uh, Dan Mueller also, uh, you know, talking about these guys all night long, uh, there's four or five drivers here looking for a huge position changes here going into uh, Homestead, Miami. Uh, so uh, just trying to get uh, that much closer to the top of the pile. Travis Joyner up on the outside as Dan Mueller is going to get to position on him. Joyner uh, having his difficulty here tonight as well. Tell you what, those last couple of laps, Dan was actually just a little bit faster than the leaders. You know, and that's all it takes is perseverance. Uh, and you know, well, working with the crew chief, getting the car set up for this last uh, dash. 105 laps in the books here, so we're definitely on the downhill side here at Phoenix. But, uh, you know, it's just, it, it's all about uh, just pacing yourself, you know, getting together. You spend the first ha half of the race, you know, testing the car out, uh, feeling it out, what's it going to do, what can it do, making the changes, get ready for that last, uh, last run to the finish line. When we were talking about Tom McKeever earlier, he has been solid all year. I um, was talking to him last week, and he's got a good solid hold on, on these physics that we run right now, and he just, he understands them really well, and he's a class driver. I mean, he's, he doesn't get caught up in a whole lot of stuff, and, you know, if he doesn't have the car to run up front that week, he'll run where his car, he'll take what his car will give him, and that that's what I admire about him. He's just a superb online sim racer, and very clean, and, you know, we talk about that a lot with him. He, he's very class act. You know, and Tom McKeever coming into uh, Phoenix here tonight. He's got 14 top five finishes under his belt and 10 top 10 finishes. So, uh, you know, that's a good indication of the kind of driver he is. Certainly a top five driver. Three wins under his belt as well. So, uh, absolutely, Tom McKeever has a great advantage at Phoenix here tonight. Still running in second place, but let's bump it back a notch. Warren Peed. Warren Peed comes in tonight with seven wins under his belt, 14 top fives, 11 top tens. That's what keeps him up in front. But I'll tell you what, Cowboy, Philip Stocks leading the pack up here in front. There's, uh, there's the guy that's chasing down Warren Peed for the uh, championship uh, points here tonight at Phoenix. Just eight points separates Peed and Stocks here tonight. So, uh, and it won't be over until Homestead. Yeah, we got 47 laps remaining, and yeah, Phillips definitely doing what he's got to do uh, this race to make it a little bit easier next week to try and capture that championship. But Warren's not giving up lightly. He's just slowly and worked his way up, and he's right there. He's he's going to give him that battle to the end. Tell you what, Phil's car looks good, but Tom's car looks real good. I think I think Phil's starting to fade a little bit as his tires get getting older. You know, uh, if McKeever can just stay right there with them, stay, you know, stay with them. And, you know, for the most part, you know, when you get to this point in the race, it's about setting up a pace and uh, not getting real, uh, not real, get, not getting real aggressive with it. But, uh, you know, just keeping an eye on the windshield up there, 
Uh, keep the guy in front of you in check. Uh, don't let him get away from you too far, but uh, just set in a good pace and uh, run him down. And I think that's what uh, McKeever's doing right now. Uh, you know, we're getting on the downhill side of things here at Phoenix. So uh, this is chase race number nine, one to go at Homestead, Miami next week. And it will be live right here on ETV Live. So you want to tune in and uh, catch that one at 8 o'clock. Oh, the stocks get a piece of the wall. So does McKeever coming off a of turn four. That's a souvenir sitting on the passenger seat up here. But I'll tell you what, no harm, no foul. Didn't uh, didn't upset anybody up here. But uh, for right now, Philip Stock still leading the pack up here. Everybody else in tow. And it looked like he just followed it, played follow the leader there, and followed him right into the wall. And that is so easy to do. You know, uh, you're trying to keep the, you know, keep everybody right there in front of you. You don't want to get them, uh, let them get too far uh, out in front. And uh, it turns, you know, it turns into that. Of course, uh, these cars are definitely uh, hard to look through the windshield. So uh, you get that close, right up on the bumper, and uh, it is follow the leader. You're praying that the guy in front of you is going to still stay on the track, you know, going into the turns, coming off the turn. So Whoa, uh, there I goes imagine. Dan. Oh, yeah. Looks like we got a caution, maybe. And a caution is out. I believe this is going to be caution number six. Yeah, it looks like he may have freed that car up too much. It's quick on the short run, but I think it's getting too loose for him as the as the run goes on there. Yeah, he was starting to fall off the leaders this last few laps. I think yeah, his his tires are giving up. Yeah, and he's got uh, the 24 car right in front of him there. Uh, this is back in an 11th position, and. Uh, Almost, you know, almost looks like uh, Ray might have gotten off the throttle uh, or even even tapped the brakes there a little bit. Mueller right on the bumper here. And if Mueller had to get on the brakes, that's going to set the front end down on the ground and raise that back end up. And then, of course, the minute you get back on the throttle, I don't know if that's what uh, caused that or not. But uh, certainly uh, Dan Mueller having a difficult, uh, difficult uh, time at this point. And pit road is open. All the leaders coming down pit road. We'll stay right with it here. Phil Stoff's going to leave it, lead them into the boxes here. Tom McKeever, Warren, Pete in tow. We'll keep an eye on uh, on what happens here. Well, man, there was a close call there. The leaders coming up, coming around to catch the pace car, and man, he almost took out the pace car. That, that was some crazy stuff right there. You bet uh, Warren Pete's going to pull into his pit box first and uh, screech it to a stop here. And the left, right side's going to go up. It'll be two tires to the right and left side for uh, actually all three of these cars. Keeping a close eye uh, on uh, on these guys up here. My cab has that number one position up here. Of course, he started on the pole here. And the Phillips Stock's going to beat him off. Warren Pete in second. Oh, my cab is almost losing it right there coming out of his box and managed to hang on to it. Uh, he's going to uh, come out third, so uh, huge, uh, a huge jump for Warren Peed as he comes out uh, as he comes out behind that 29 machine. So uh, I tell you what, uh, a little bit of competition going on down there on pit road, guys. Yeah, yeah Tom, Tom dropped two spots on that one. Yeah, it's easy to do. Uh, you you call up your don't get your pit crew ready quick enough you can lose a couple seconds uh, and then, then that'll cost you a spot or two on pit road in this uh, simulation you bet as they uh, get back into single file I think we just heard the uh, one to go from the uh, from the flag stand up there and I believe uh, Philip Stocks looks like he's going to take the inside because that's going to be the preferred uh, line here at Phoenix. Warren Pete up on the outside. Mike Hebb, who uh, you know pretty much led the uh, first part of this race here tonight, he'll be restarting back here in the second row and third in that number 11 machine. Outside him, slipping back a couple of notches on that last pit stop is the 85 car of Tom McKeever, who finished second here. Uh, last time out. So uh, pace car is pulling off. We'll see what McKeever's got for the rest of these boys. But I'll tell you what, Mike Cab, Warren Pete up there in the mix. And uh, we are back to racing here at Phoenix. And it almost looks like uh, Warren, or uh, 
Uh, Philip Soft's got off kind of a slow start there a little bit. 61 car hanging out the, on the outside up there. That's Warren Peed looking for position, going down the back. Oh, drops right down in behind the 29 machine. Down the back stretch, guys, and Mike Hebb is right there. Yeah, really tight. Uh, Warren did a good job uh, on that restart. Um, he did allow uh, Stocks to beat him to the line, but he, he held it there and then s swung down to get down low where you need to be. I think if he kind of rides around there and lets Philip wear out his stuff, uh, he, he might be able to make a move on him here down, down after a few laps. Yeah, these restarts, they're, they're a little crazy until the uh, temperatures come up in them tires and the air pressures come up, so and it's a little scary for the first two laps. You bet, and I believe it's 37 laps to go here, 36 laps to go here at Phoenix International Raceway, so uh, we got enough tires and enough fuel for sure to go to the end, so it's just a matter of time here. However, uh, if we go green all the way to the end, we're getting right into the outside edge of uh, tire wear, so... Uh, Oh, the caution comes out again here at Phoenix. This will be uh, caution number seven, I believe. It's actually the 14 car of John Kennedy, guys. See what happened to uh, Kennedy back here. Now, he was the last one in line. Looks like Ray Moss might have gotten in the back of the 14 machine here a little bit. Can't be sure here. No, it looks oh, like no. Kennedy blew a tire, it looks like. Now yeah, he, he just got really loose, and uh, Moss actually did a good job of keeping off of him there. I think he, well, I think he was just cutting the corner in that back kink like they did on TV, and that's a little tricky in the simulation. Yeah, I was just, I was just seeing that Kennedy drops all the way down below that yellow line, and then of course that transition back up. You're talking about two different racing surfaces here, one that's rubbered in, one that isn't. And, uh, of course, the banking change uh, right there at the yellow line. So uh, that probably threw Kennedy in that 14 machine for a loop raw of Ray Moss right behind him, uh, trying to stay off the bumper of that mess. But uh, John Kennedy bringing out caution number seven here at Phoenix International Raceway, guys. Ooh, a hard hit into the outside wall. Lots of damage to that 14 car. Old Tony Bagstad has been doing a decent job tonight. He's uh, he doesn't race with us every week. Um, he races a lot of the times. Uh, he's not able to make it every week, but he's he's been doing a fairly good job uh, hanging in there and not causing any issues tonight. I'm pretty proud of the guy. You bet. And uh, pit road open this time by. Now we just had uh, we just had caution here just a few laps ago. So. Uh, don't know that we're going to get any takers coming up here. Road. Certainly the leaders will stay out this time by. That's going to be Philip Stocks, Warren Peed, Mike Hebb, uh, Tom McKeever. But uh, while we're uh, under caution here, I want to tell you about another show that's happening here every Monday night on ETV Live. And that is the end. The winner is Motorsport Show. And let me tell you something, Cowboy. If you're into local track racing, dirt track, late model stuff, you want to catch this one live on ETV Live and ETV Live Radio. Join Wesley Island, Mike Neff, and uh, I tell you, every Monday night from 6 to 8 p.m., get the latest updates from local dirt and asphalt tracks all over the country, driver interviews, and more. And the winner's Motorsport Show every Monday night from 6 p.m. Eastern to 8 p.m. right here live on ETV Live. And I tell you, there's been an influx of uh, fans coming to the late to, to the uh, uh, short tracks, the uh, local tracks. And, uh, you know, talking to uh, some of the drivers, uh, you can interact with them, get into the chat room. Uh, you know, they'll take questions from the, uh, from the audience. So it's, it's a pretty cool show on Monday nights here. And, of course, uh, following that at 930, the Real Sim Racing Full Throttle Cup Series will stay right here at Phoenix International Raceway as they enjoy their chase race number nine. I believe Landon Huffman uh, is the points leader over there uh, coming into Phoenix here tonight. Uh, tomorrow night, rather. So uh, a night uh, filled uh, with racing events at uh, ETV Live. So uh, tune in tomorrow night starting at 6 o'clock for And the Winner Is, and, of course, at 9.30 for the uh, Full Throttle Cup Series. I 
believe it's 32 laps to go here at Phoenix for the ESRL Elite Pro Series here, sponsored by Hostile Simulation Servers, Hostile Contact Simulation Servers. And I believe the pace car is going to pull off this time by. Phillip Stocks out in front with Warren Pede, Mike Kevin McKeever still your front four up here. First and second row, 27 car Tony Bagstead back here with Joyner in the, in the uh, third row as we get the restart. And I'll tell you what, uh, Warren Pede hanging right in there with the 29, goes in hard into the turn one. And I'll tell you what, Pede trying to make it happen, doesn't have the horsepower, can't get past the 29 through the turn, but might get him on the back stretch here. 29 car fighting hard down here on the bottom into turn four, or turn three rather, through the middle of turn four. And I'll tell you what, Phillips uh, almost breaking loose here a little bit. Looks like the back end might be stepping out a little bit, hanging on to a still side by side to the stripes, going into turn one. 29 car is going to beat Warren Pede to the punch there. Well, we got right in the back there. Caution Listen. number eight. 14 car John Kennedy again guys that'll be the second time here in just a matter of laps see if you can roll it around and it looks like a gaggle of cards actually John Kennedy is a victim guys it all start it looks like it started in front of him might have been Ray Moss I got one more shot actually Gary Cross and uh, Ray Moss up here guys the 69 and 24 at it again guys that's going to send a 69 car around. It's going to be back here in about 7th position or so, guys. Uh, looks like 7th, 8th position, 8th position, maybe. Let's see if I can get a better, uh, looking for a better angle on it here. Yeah, it look, looked like uh, the 69 and the 24 got together there, and... Uh, the 14 started checking up for it, and he got hit in the back uh, from the 21, and so it's kind of a chain reaction there. And uh, there's some good battling up front there between the 61 and the the 29 up front. They uh, got a good rivalry going this year, and boy, Warren Pete held that outside. Looked like he was going to get him until that caution came out. It almost looked that way, and uh, I tell you what, going back to the 24 and 69, that's the second time tonight that those two have tangled. Remember, the first one was way back on lap 41 uh, when they got together. So uh, that 24 car to 69, round two here at Phoenix International Raceway. I tell you what, while we're under caution here, why don't we go ahead and step away. Let's take another commercial break. You're watching live, ETV Live. It's the only choice, Cowboy. Don't wander off. We'll be right back. Hey dude, are you ready to rock and roll? If that's cool, then you need to do it over at HD Radio Network. HD Radio Network, four stations broadcasting 24-7 with everything from metal favorites to the 80s classic rock like legendary Leonard Skinner, Electric Light Orchestra, Foreigner, and bone-rattling, skull-crushing rock and roll on hard-driving radio. Bear Factory, Stone Temple Pilots, Def Leppard, and a whole lot more. HDRadioNetwork.com. Take your pick and rock your brains out, dude. And we are back as we took the green flag. And uh, I'll tell you what, Warren P. just a little bit of sleep on that one. Stocks took the green flag, got a huge jump. Mike Hebb's taking, staying right with him here. 
Remember, Mike Hebb uh, led most of the first part of the race, and then uh, the second half pretty much uh, stagnated there in the middle of the pack, but uh, working himself right back up in front. 61 car, Warren Pede, was duking it out with Philip Stocks up there just before this last caution. He finds himself back here in third with Tom McKeever chasing him down in fourth. Tony Bagstead uh, makes up your top five up here as we have uh, 24 laps to go here at Phoenix International Raceway for chase race number nine with the Elite Pro Series here. Yeah, Dan Mueller looks like he's got his car doing a little better. Mueller sitting back here in sixth position in that number six machine. Uh, he's staying right with that bunch up in front. Tony Bags had slipped up a little bit. A little bit of tire smoke coming off that 27 car as he slips up to the outside. That's going to let uh, Mueller down on the bottom here for position. Move that sixth to uh, fifth uh, here at uh, Phoenix. And uh, he's now staring at the bumper of that 85. Now Tom McKeever was uh, pretty much running right behind the leader all night long up here. A little mishap down around Pitt Road a couple of pit stops ago sent him backwards a couple of notches. So he's got some work cut out of him, cut out for him before this thing over with tonight. And uh, we are definitely on a downhill side of things here in Chase Race Number Nine at Phoenix International Raceway here, guys. But I tell you right now, Mike Hebb, Philip Stocks, a class of the field up here in the front. And uh, Philip Stocks is just where he wants to be. Remember, he came in eight points behind Warren Peed. Peed now back in third. He needs to overtake Stocks before this thing is over with tonight in order to hang on to that points lead. Yeah, this is going to get interesting as we get down with less and less laps to go to see how aggressive they do get. Uh, I don't think uh, cautions are over yet. Yeah, <laughs> almost, uh, almost 20 laps. Let's call it 20 laps to go here at Phoenix. So uh, I'll tell you what, cautions have helped a couple of these guys. Leaders pretty much staying out though. Remember, old tires do not work here at Phoenix International Raceway. So uh, we'll see how much, uh, how long these guys can hang on to it. But uh, in the meantime, it's Phil Stocks, Mike, Hebb, Warren, Pete, Tom, McKeever, your top four here. Dan Mueller enters the picture in fifth. And, uh, of course, in behind him, Ray Moss, Tony Bagstead back here in seventh position. And uh, several of them on the hauler for tonight. That's going to be uh, Gary Madu and Terry Milford uh, uh, behind the wall. But uh, for right now, uh, it is all about the leaders up here, Philip Stocks. He's been the headliner here tonight at Phoenix, looking to uh, get that position away or at least close the distance uh, going into Homestead next week with Warren Pede. So uh, Mike Hebb uh, certainly putting on a class show here tonight at Phoenix. Remember, uh, Mike Hebb uh, finished 16th last time out here at Phoenix, so it's a little redemption for him here tonight. McKeever was second last time out, so uh, McKeever looking for a good finish here as well. Hey, Mike, I think we need to come up with a new track for John Kennedy. Yeah, one that fits the setup he's got. Well, I think we <laughs> need to come out with a new track called 40 Acre Field because that's about the only thing he's going to be able to turn left in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's having a rough night tonight. And, and John's a decent sim racer. Uh, he just doesn't get the time like he used to a couple years ago. But, yeah, he's struggling a little bit tonight. Oh, John could sure. turn. John could turn some fast laps. He just, man, that setup just ain't working for him. And uh, take it up in front here, guys. Warren Pede was going after the 85 of Tom McKeever. Got to the outside of him. Could not, could not hang on to him. And uh, McKeever got the better of that. But it almost looked like Warren Pede was getting the uh, car just a little bit loose. Had to back off the throttle. And uh, that let McKeever get some distance on him. But uh, let's check the distance between him, but between that 85 and the 11 car. I tell you what, McKeever has got some distance, some serious distance to make up to get to the bumper at that 11, Mike Hebb up, up there in front. But uh, Philip Stocks, uh, in the number one car up here in that 29 machine, he's not looking backwards either, Cowboy. I tell you what, uh, he's doing a fine job keeping that car right there tucked down on the bottom. Has his eyeball on the ball here coming off of turn four and uh, doing a fine job hanging out there in the front. So as this thing starts to wind down, I'll tell you what, uh, Warren Pede uh, has got to whoop them ponies here a little bit and uh, get that uh, 61 car up there for uh, contention. 
Yeah, when we, when we first started talking about that series there, uh, uh, McKeever's about a second off the pace of the leaders, and he's got it down to eight tenths, so he's running a little bit quicker. Dan Mueller's got himself back up in fifth place. I guess when you beat all the fenders and bumpers off the car, it gets lighter and goes faster. There you go. And uh, I tell you, coming to uh, 12 laps to go when the leaders cross the stripes here, uh, we are definitely getting down the short end of the stick here at Phoenix Raceway. And this is Chase Race number 9, the ESRL Elite Pro Series, sponsored by Hostile Contact Simulation Servers. And uh, I tell you what, uh, what a show here tonight, guys. Uh, 27 cautions. Last time we were out 33 cars. Tonight we are on caution number 8. But uh, keep your fingers crossed, Cowboy, as we get down to the wire here. Uh, for this one, but uh, coming to about 10 laps to go, two more to go for, until we reach that 10 to go here. Mike Hebb leads the pack, or Philip Stock leads the pack with Mike Hebb chasing him down. Hebb getting right to the bumper coming off of turn four. Can't hang on to it. Horsepower in that 29 machine will prevail going down into turn one. Well, and uh, McKeever and that PV Dodge is right up on him now. He's got it less than half a second and He's going to be contending for that win as well. We'll see what happens here in a few laps. I think Warren Pete's got a problem, guys. He's, he's dropping back. Warren yeah. Pete, uh, 2.3 seconds off the pace from the leaders up here, guys. And uh, that's going to be devastating here for him as far as the points go uh, with Phil Stocks up there in the front. If Philip Stocks takes the trophy home here tonight, that's some serious, uh, some serious points for him going into Homestead next week. So you're absolutely right. Warren P definitely drifting towards the back. Tom McKeever, on the other hand, he has worked himself right up to the front here, and he's within a few tenths of the leader. So uh, this is going to be the uh, McKeever, uh, Stocks, and Heb show here tonight before this thing is over with lots of tire smoke coming off the 29 machine as he gets on the binders coming off the turn two. But uh, tell you what, uh, he's got his work cut out for him. Mike he or, uh, Philip Stocks is not looking backwards here. Mike Heb trying to get to the bumper and make something happen. But uh, I'll tell you something, Tom McKeever's watching that all out in front. 147 laps in the books. We are on nine, uh, uh, actually eight laps to go here at uh, at Phoenix, guys. So uh, getting down the wire. Yeah, and uh, Heb did a good job of staying off of uh, stocks there, not cause a three-car wreck. <laughs> I tell you yes. what, racing with, Tom, ra racing with Tom McKeever, every time I see him in the mirror, or still see him in the mirror, always Ouch. makes me whoa, always makes me nervous because Tom won't make a mistake, and he'll wait for you to make one little mistake, he'll drive right on by you. You bet, and uh, we just watched the 11 car uh, of Mike Hebb take a piece of the wall with him right off turn four there, and uh, that's, always, uh, that's always an issue too, guys, so I tell you what, uh, Mike Hebb trying to get to the 29 machine does not need to be banging the walls on the way around this thing here tonight. Phillips Stocks is just absolutely on a rail. He's got that thing pointed forward, horsepower to the Mac, got the pedal down, Cowboy. And I'll tell you what, Stocks is not looking in that rearview mirror, but Mike Hebb, he's trying to get there. Tom McKeever, who uh, ran an outstanding race all night long, hanging out in the top three, top two, uh, pretty much all night, trying to get there as we have six laps to go here at Phoenix International Raceway. And you got Warren Pete back there in fourth, just trying to hang on and not give up any more spots, uh, trying not give up too many more points. Uh, I think he burned up his right front there on those couple restarts when he's in the outside lane, just pushing it too hard. Opportunity for the number six of Dan Mueller is he's got Warren Pete right in front. Dan Mueller sitting back there in fifth, and hey, fifth, fifth position, very respectable finish here at Phoenix International Raceway. But uh, you're absolutely right, Warren Pete now 2.7 uh, seconds off the leaders, uh, or uh, uh, 2.4 seconds off the leaders up here, guys. No help coming to that 61 machine. Four laps to go here at Phoenix. Tom McKeever up here in third position trying to chase down the 11 of Mike Hebb, who uh, is losing distance now to Phillips Stocks. Looks like he can get him on the uh, run going into the turn. Stocks getting off the throttle just a little bit sooner, uh, but uh, Mike Hebb's losing him on the exit. So uh, I tell you, Stocks has got the, uh, got the power coming off. Mike Kev's still a little late on the throttle coming off, and I think that's where he's losing it. 
Yeah, sometimes you charge it in too hard. You're just not going to get that run off the corner. For sure, three laps to go here at Phoenix International Raceway. And again, uh, race being sponsored by Hostile Contact Simulation Servers, HostileContact.com. And uh, I tell you, this is going to be uh, this is going to be uh, a pretty good finish here tonight. Kind of a three-way uh, deal going up here with McKeever, Hebb, and Stocks. And remember, coming in tonight, Philip Stocks hunting down that 61 machine of Warren Pete. Eight points behind coming into Phoenix. He's going to go out with the trophy here tonight if it goes his way. Well, they're still hanging there. Uh, we'll see what happens here on this uh, these final two laps. You bet. It's across the start finish line. And I'll tell you what, they are on the white flag lap. This is it, Cowboy. It is game over. Caution flag will not save today for anybody as we do the final lap around here with with Phil Stocks out in front, Mike Hebb in close tow, Tom McKeever drifting backwards now a little bit, about half a second off the pace, coming through turn four, final time, no help from Mike Hebb, Phil Stocks going to get to the start finish line first, and he will go on with the trophy from Phoenix International Raceway, Mike Hebb, Tom McKeever, Warren Pete for fourth, Dan Mueller with a respectable fifth place finish from Phoenix International Raceway here tonight. Yeah, it was a nice run tonight, and uh, Philip did what he had to do to make up some points heading into Homestead, and it should be an interesting battle next week. Is that a fight in the pits? Oh, no, sorry, I was watching TV. No. <laughs> Well, you know, the 24 car was involved in that earlier one, but uh, I don't think they had a 69 car out there today. Did they? <laughs> All right, I'll tell you what, what a night here at Phoenix International Raceway. Philip Stocks taking the trophy homer tonight, and I'll tell you what, he's got to be grinning from ear to ear. Was able to uh, put the uh, 61 machine to bed tonight. Warren Pete finishing in fourth. And uh, why don't we go ahead and step away, and we will get ready for the hostile contact simulation service post-race show here from Phoenix International Raceway. And uh, Mike Schreiner and uh, Joel Brown will join me here with post-race activities. Let's step away, take a quick commercial break. When we come back, your top four, top five. Hey dude, are you ready to rock and roll? If that's cool, then you need to do it over at HD Radio Network. HD Radio Network, four stations broadcasting 24-7 with everything from metal favorites to the 80s classic rock like legendary Leonard Skinner, Electric Light Orchestra, Foreigner, and bone-rattling, skull-crushing rock and roll on hard driving radio. Bear Factory, Stone Temple Pilots, Def Leppard, and a whole lot more. HDRadioNetwork.com. Take your pick and rock your brains out, dude. All right, we are back live here from Phoenix International Raceway. This is Chase Race number nine. And uh, I tell you what, uh, this is the ESRL Elite Pro Series. And what a night here at Phoenix. Last time out, 27 cautions. Tonight, just eight. And uh, it was a terrific finish to the, uh, to the finish line here tonight. Let's start out with Joel Brown. I believe he's standing down on Pitt Road with our third place finisher, Tom McKeever. Hey, Tom. I was uh, watching you racing tonight, and boy, I know I've seen you in my rearview mirror a few times and always made me real nervous because I know you just sit back there and never miss your marks, just waiting for the guys to make a mistake. Is that kind of what you was doing tonight in the race at the end? 
Uh, yeah, pretty much. Uh, I had a real good long run car. Um, so I knew if I could just hang out, hit my marks, keep the pressure on, wait for him to make a mistake, because it is so hard to pass at this track. Yeah, I was watching, man. Your car looked stable. It looked great. It seemed like the longer the run, it looked like it just got better and better. I guess you kind of set it up more for the long run? Yes, I did. Yeah, it was definitely a long run. It was good enough out of the gate to, you know, keep up with the pace, you know, so I wasn't giving up a whole lot early in the run, and then later on it did. It just felt like it got better and better uh, as the run went. Yeah, I mean, it looks like a couple of times when you had to race to get back up to the front, it's like you had no problem getting there, but, yeah, I know what it's like at Phoenix. It's like it's one thing to catch him, it's another thing to pass him, and I guess it's kind of tough once you get up behind him to try and get a run coming out of the corners. Yeah, exactly. But it looked like you had a great car, great run. I'm sure if you could have gotten the front, they would have had nothing for you, so congratulations on third-place finish. Thanks, Joel. All right, Tom McKeever with a solid third place finish from Phoenix International Raceway here tonight. Let's move the mic on up a little bit. I believe Mike Schreiner standing by with Mike Hebb, second place finisher. Yeah, we got Mike Hebb down here in the pits, driver of the 11 Toyota Camry. Uh, Mike, you dominated the first half of this race, and it kind of faded in the middle and then got back up there. What what happened towards the middle of the race, sir? Uh I guess, you know, Tom was uh, putting a lot of pressure on me there, and uh, I think he was, uh, I was burning up my stuff pretty good there, so uh, I decided uh, it might be best just to let him by and uh, go from there. Well, you had a really solid car tonight. Um, just at the end there, you, you're keeping up. Uh, did you just push it a little too hard there to try and uh, get Philip at the end, or did he just have that uh, better car at the end there? I, I think we were pretty even, Mike. I, I got to tell you, man, that was the best Phoenix car I've ever had. Um, I mean, it was just stable the whole run. Um, but you know, it's tough racing these guys. You know, I'm just racing for fun. I'm kind of out of the uh, the hunt here. So, but I had a good car. You know, I'm going for the win. But you know, you really got to be careful around the 85, the 61, and the 29. But at the same time, you know, you just don't want to lay over. So. Um, I was, I was being real careful around uh, Phil. Well, you did an awesome job tonight. Um, we've seen you improve over the last few years, and you're definitely a top-notch driver here in the Elite Pro Series. And congratulations on your second-place finish, and hopefully you have a good run next week. Thanks, Mike. I appreciate it. All right, and I'll tell you what, uh, solid run for Mike Kebb, finishing second here at Phoenix. I'm standing down here in Victory Lane. I've got Philip Sox, who's got a grin from one end of his face to the other. I'll tell you what, Cowboy, coming into tonight, eight points off of Warren Peed, who finishes in fourth position here tonight. you got to be happy with that. Definitely, definitely. I, I, I knew what I had to do tonight, and I wasn't sure with the talent level that's in this series whether I could pull it off or not. And thanks to my teammate Tom, I, I know I say that every time I, I get interviewed, but well, I had a setup that was a little quicker than his uh, short run, and but it, not by much, just a little bit quicker. And then he had a really good set throughout the run, and and right before race, we threw in his his set. Uh, and configured the car the same as his, and that's what pulled it off tonight, without a doubt. Let's take you back to the uh, first run at Phoenix here uh, about 30-some-odd weeks ago. Uh, Warren Peed uh, and Philip Stocks, uh, ninth and eighth, respectively. You beat him last time here at Phoenix. Uh, were you uh, conscious of that coming into Phoenix here tonight? Uh, did you feel it was going to be a pretty close match? Uh, seems how you finished right behind each other uh, last time out. Well, I had a little better car than my finish last time. Um, I had a top three car and got caught up in some, some stuff and and just didn't get the finish that, that the car was capable of. Um, so I, I knew I had, you know, something, you know, tonight. But, uh, you know, Warren's he's top notch, and uh, he, he comes out every week with his best stuff. And, 
and he's shown that, and that's the reason why he was points leader coming into the race. And I, I wasn't, I wasn't expecting him to, uh, to, to do anything but what he did tonight. He challenged for the lead, and and I definitely think he was in the mix tonight. So I, I knew it was going to be close. You bet, and I'll tell you what, uh, going to Homestead next week, I don't know how the points are going to shake out, but I'll tell you what, Cowboy, it is going to be close. What's your game plan for Homestead? Uh, same as it was tonight. Um, I'm just going to go in there and, and try to try to lead a lap and try to lead as many laps as I can and, and lead the most important one at the end. Um, there's going to be, uh, uh, like every week, there's going to be some really strong cars out there, so... Uh, we've got to we got to get to work in the garage and and you know, make sure we come out there with our best stuff and and uh, just keep focused on you know getting the best finish we can get. That's what we do every week. And I've been fortunate enough you know enough in the chase to get a few wins and it's worked out um, you know. But it's not over for sure. You bet. And I'll tell you what, who made it happen for you here tonight, bud? Uh, without a doubt, um, you know, I, I got to throw a big, big thank you to Tom because it was the decision to go with his set and him sharing some of his, you know, tweaks he had done on his car that gave me the car I had tonight. Um, I think it, it, it played out that that was the difference because I had a really good short run set and I just don't think I could have held off Mike with my set. Um, you know, looking there at the end of those last few laps, and I want to thank him. I want to thank Mike. I mean, that was absolutely phenomenal racing. He races clean every time he comes out to the track, and uh, that's that's huge. And I, I really appreciate him racing me clean there in that situation. You bet. I'll tell you what. Locked and loaded, looking for Bear, leaving uh, Phoenix International Raceway with a trophy, looking for the championship at Homestead. Philip Stocks. Uh, smiling all the way. And uh, I tell you, let's go back to uh, Joel Brown and Mike Schreiner. Last thoughts here from uh, Phoenix, guys. Uh, what are we looking for when we get to Homestead? Oh, I think Mike's gone. Uh-oh. <laughs> there he is. All right, there he is. All right, let's try it one more time. Uh, final thoughts, guys. Uh, let's start. Let's start with Joel Brown since he was here first. But uh, you know, uh, what a race here tonight. Uh, certainly much better uh, conditions than the last one here about 30 some odd weeks ago. But uh, what are we looking for when we get to Homestead, guys? Last one. It's going to be both Phil and Warren. They there's no defensive driving going into Homestead. These guys they got to go for it. It's got to be wide open, all out. Even take some chances. Whoever finishes in front of the other one is pretty much going to have the championship. And this this isn't like, you know, they race for a few months and they just figure out, you know, who's going to win a championship. This is like the big boys. They race all year, and it's coming down to this one race with just a couple points in between them. So it's going to be an all-out, go-for-it type of type of race at Homestead. It's, it's going to be good. You bet. And uh, Mike Schreiner, Dan Mueller, Ray Moss, Mike Coon, these guys down here, uh, you know, in the middle of the pack here, racing for position, only several points apart. Uh, what do you think is going to happen uh, at Homestead for these guys? I, I think they're going to be careful around the leaders, um, but still race hard, uh, like Mike talk, Heb talked about tonight. Uh, they're racing for pride. They're racing for a win themselves in the season on a good note. Um, with the you know, championship contenders, Warren and Phillip, you know, they're one point apart. Um, it's it's going to be whoever beats the other one. And um, Phillip's either going to have to win or finish a couple of points, uh, positions ahead of Warren to take this championship. So it's either one of theirs to take. And hopefully they get a race it out to the end. Nothing happens to either one of them. Uh, Homestead's a multi-groove track, so it could be interesting to see how this goes. All right, and I'll tell you what, you can tune in next Sunday night right here live on ETV Live, 8 o'clock p.m. You do not want to miss this one as Warren Peed and Philip Stock duke it out at Homestead Miami Speedway. And uh, more racing coming your way, guys. Uh, tomorrow night, starting at 6 o'clock, uh, is the And the Winners Motorsport Show from 6 to 8 p.m. with with uh, Wesley Outland and Michael Neff.
Following that at 9.30, we're camped out here at Phoenix International Raceway, the Rilsom Racing Full Throttle Cup Series, and uh, that's been an exciting series from day one, so you do not want to miss that race tomorrow night right here live from Phoenix. And then Tuesday night, the uh, NASCAR uh, iRacing Pro Series with uh, Tim Terry, uh, Dakota Ehrman, uh, Mike Conti, and the whole crew, and uh, special pre-race activities as uh, you've been watching all week long here on ETV Live. So a lot more racing coming your way. Check the calendar over at etv-eplay.net. Of course, all the replays still available for free. Just uh, get on over there, etv-eplay.net. So for all the boys here at Phoenix International Raceway, Phil Stocks, Mike Hibb, Tom McKeever, our top three finishers. And I'll tell you what, uh, big thanks to Mike Schreiner, Joel Brown for joining me up here in the booth. John Westling is always pushing those magic fingers, uh, working the magic fingers on the buttons here tonight. Uh, we'll see you next time on ETV Live. Thank <laughs> you.